different ways to gather data and where you can easily store it. I wanted to talk about Google Search Console first, which is formerly known as Google Webmaster Tools, which will help you gain better insight into many of the organic tools and uh, information that your site will have to help identify what pages are being indexed, um, keywords that have the most impressions, even a sample of their rankings. Now let's take Google Analytics, the lifeblood of all things pertaining to your website. If you don't have Google Analytics set up on your site, please do so immediately. This will help you identify where your traffic is coming from, how long they stay on your site, being able to set up and track custom goals and metrics, conversions, geographical reports, um, behavioral reports, and much, much more. Okay, now let's shift over to post goal completion and talk about Salesforce, the world's largest, most common CRM. Salesforce allows you to track leads, their current status, who they're assigned to, where they came from, how many times they've been contacted, even revenue figures, uh, really, really cool dashboards, and much, much more. So I realize this is a lot to take in, but a good percentage of companies utilize all three of these data sources on a daily basis to help them make some of the most important business decisions a business can make. Now, what about Google's pride and joy? If you've ever taken a look at Google's quarterly financials, you'll see that about 70% of their revenue come from Google AdWords. That's in the ballpark of $70 billion annually. Suffice it to say, I think Google AdWords needs to be on this short list as well. Most would describe the AdWords platform as the interface to manage and optimize your paid search campaigns. While this is true, it can also be used as a powerful data hub. It's true. You can actually start to import data directly from Google Search Console, Google Analytics, even Salesforce, directly into AdWords. So you're probably asking yourself, is this really possible? The answer is yes. To quote the great Kevin Garnett, anything is possible. Coming back to Google Search Console, one of my favorite ways to collect and compare data on how one channel influences another is to pull a report called the Paid and Organic Search Report. You can find this report directly in the AdWords interface located under the Dimensions tab. If you're a paid search analyst, you probably know exactly where to find this. If you're not, hopefully this is still valuable in some way. All you need to do is be able to connect your Google Search Console data into AdWords and see the keyword rankings you're bidding on, how they're impacted by organic rankings, uh, the combined number of clicks, queries, even what the cost per query is when you add up paid and organic together. We actually did a blog post about this entitled How 1 Plus 1 Equals 3. It's on our website, uh, bigleaf.com. If you ever get a chance to look at it, please do so. It's pretty cool. Okay, so here's a screenshot of what the report looks like. When I worked in-house at a fairly large company that I referenced earlier, we had big budgets and even bigger targets. One of the goals was to grow the company's uh, campaigns to a much larger size. This meant spending more, and therefore the expectation was to acquire more customers through the process. The issue soon became, as we began to scale, that the high costs of the core necessary PPC keywords became so great we were spending upwards of 70 to $80 a click. So in order to bid on those keywords, ultimately would mean uh, our financial threshold would simply be outside of the norm and we wouldn't be able to acquire a customer because those costs were gonna be too high. So we started looking at all of our digital campaigns and even some offline campaigns such as uh, TV, radio, billboard, um, certainly email, and then we hit a breakthrough we found that looking at the paid and organic search report, we found that when our paid ad was being shown in the top three search positions, our organic listing received a 600% increase in traffic. Pretty cool stuff. This report can be a great tool in also determining whether or not to bid on branded search terms. Having been in the industry for a few years, I've been asked that question dozens, maybe even hundreds of times, both working in-house and as an agency. 
if you've ever had this question or even had the question for yourself, pull this report and look at the differences between when uh, paid and organic show up together. It's pretty interesting stuff. Okay, so now we saw in the paid and organic search report, you're able to pull really useful insights directly into ad into AdWords. So now let's talk about Google Analytics. Some of the most common metrics that can be pulled from Google Analytics include time on site, percentage of new sessions or visitors, even bounce rates. How valuable is it to understand this type of behavior that one exhibits after they've clicked on one of your paid ads? And remember, you're paying for this visit, so take advantage of learning as much as you can. Just because they didn't convert on the first visit doesn't mean that was money thrown away. Look at the data and see how valuable it can be in a research, as a researching tool to determine sticking points uh, and really ultimately the best ways to improve that user experience. All of these things in the paid search world, what I would say, impact quality score. I would say quality score is the, if not one of the most important factors in determining the success of your campaign. High quality scores will likely result in success, while low quality scores could potentially serve as a cancer that spreads to other keywords in your campaign, causing diminishing returns. Okay. All this is interesting, or at least I think it's interesting, but let's talk about what all this means to let's take, for example, a C-suite team. The CMO for a Fortune 500 company is not likely to be interested in quality scores, click-through rates, or even potentially lead costs. They will be interested to learn about the result of all the data and effort that goes into getting these leads by their output, sales. This is where Salesforce comes into play and really leads the way. If you have experience using Salesforce, you know how great and also how frustrating it can be. Sometimes I tell our partners, one of the greatest things about Salesforce is that it's highly customizable. One of the worst things about Salesforce is that it's highly customizable. No two companies use it the exact same way. No two companies have the exact same goals for measurement, value leads the same way, have the same revenue figures, the records the same way. So if you claim to be a Salesforce expert, which I do not, um, you have a unique experience to be able to learn and relearn how to use Salesforce from one company to the next. So to break this down to a more computable level, there are a few metrics that are somewhat standard that can be pulled into AdWords using custom metrics. These include close one opportunities, which essentially means a lead that has closed into a paying customer. Revenue, which is somewhat self-explanatory, but can be represented in annual or monthly recurring revenue if your business model uh, is built around recurring revenue. Leads, which are actually different than converted clicks or conversions. In this case, uh, a Salesforce lead usually represents somebody that's filled out a white paper or um, downloaded a piece of content, called in, participated in a webinar, and then has become qualified by the salesperson to move into a more qualified lead category. An example might be if your company sells a piece of software that only works for other companies that have 50 employees or more. Well, my company has 42 employees, so it's likely that I would be filtered out of that process and would not become a qualified lead showing up here on this report simply because my company wouldn't qualify. From there, you can see it's the easy, uh, how easy it is and how important it is to be able to look at this cost data on acquiring highly qualified leads that are actively being nurtured and how much it costs really at the end of the day to acquire a customer or what I would consider a true cost per acquisition. What may be even cooler about this report is that you can pull all this information on a campaign, ad group, ad, even a keyword level. It's pretty awesome. So now we have data. How do we use it to better target, test, and track? The digital marketing space is shifting away from traditional keyword targeting and more about audience targeting, but often still using keywords to reach specific audiences. So let's think about the days when telemarketing was much more prevalent. Oftentimes, we would get phone calls at my home growing up from numbers we didn't recognize. We looked at the caller ID, and it was from some random number. Oftentimes, it was an 800 or an 888 number. So we had the unique opportunity to screen all of these phone calls from my parents. 
one way of knowing whether or not we were being spammed by a telemarketer was to determine whether or not the person on the other end of the phone knew how to pronounce our last name. If they asked for Mr. Irie or Mr. Air, we knew they were telemarketers and we went out on some sort of random sales list to be sold. However, if they asked for Mr. Iyer or Steve Iyer, which is my dad's name, we are much more willing to cooperate and hand the phone over to my dad. This thing is true for vis visiting a website or looking at an ad on Facebook or LinkedIn, even Google. If the messaging is custom and if you speak to them directly, they are much more likely to respond. Being able to pull the data um, to better qualify and customize the message really relies on examining the experience that different individuals are having on your website. Google Analytics, among many other really cool platforms, allow you to pull reports that show you the path different groups of visitors experience. This particular example is called the Behavior Flow Report, and it's found in Google Analytics. This report can show you really cool things from customizable date ranges, being able to pivot off of landing pages or marketing mediums, um, even drill pages to better determine why people on your site are leaving. All of this is based off of patterns. If you haven't had a chance to look at this report, take some time to do so. It's a little bit overwhelming, but as you kind of work through it, you can highlight different patterns and different paths. And ultimately, I feel like it's a pretty intuitive report for the most part. Um, it's not static, it's totally dynamic, it's, it's ever moving, ever changing. Um, and if you ever want to just call it Big Leap and talk about it, I'd be happy to because this is one of my personal favorite reports and, and really, uh, really like digging into this one. All right, so we have two funnels here. The funnel on the left is really designed to be more of a marketing campaign funnel. So let's kind of walk through it here. Step one, gather traffic. Step two, create custom audiences from the traffic and put them into buckets, such as isolating visitors that clicked on a Facebook post or sponsored uptake. Step three, qualify the audience by serving up some sort of custom messaging in your remarketing efforts. Step four, educate them by requesting that they take a free product demo by nurturing them with a white paper, download, a product video, or even a webinar, for that matter. <laughs> Essentially, anything that you can do that will help them take the big leap. I know that was super cheesy, but I had to throw it in there at least once, so I apologize. From there, just simply close the deal. This is a much more simplified way of looking at a more complex but potentially accurate view of what a salesperson may look at in their sales funnel, which can be illustrated on the right. Ultimately, the more data that you have allows you to make better decisions furthering your own reach within your company's um, political balance, if you will. Uh, so if you're trying to justify, let's say, if you're working in-house, the budgets that you're responsible for, you can further your reach by justifying how much influence you have by increasing revenues for your company. If you work for an agency, you can better justify the fees you're charging and quite possibly keep your job. You might say this is a really complex, really hardcore thing to say, so how is that true? I would say about being able to be responsible for, at least in part, uh, bringing in more revenue and pulling the right levers that open the gates for even more revenue. Revenue, revenue, revenue. Isn't that the lifeblood that keeps everything going in a company? I'll say it one more time. Revenue. Okay, so let's talk about goals and how no two goals are created equal. In Google Analytics, AdWords, or really pick any marketing platform, there's usually a column that's entitled goals or conversions. The truth is there are many types of conversions that may be counted the exact same way but are worth very different amounts to your company. Let's take, for example, a white paper download. It certainly should be considered a conversion perhaps the very entry point in the sales funnel where maybe a, a newsletter um, could be really valuable for a social media campaign or a lead nurturing campaign. Um, but what about somebody filling out a form submission on your website? Well, even a phone call to a sales team may prove to be the most valuable lead there is. Again, shouldn't weighted uh, conversions be played in here because 
a phone call can often convert 10 times more likely than a white paper download or even somebody su submitting their information to your newsletter. So speaking of phone calls, you might ask the question, well, Google Analytics is great for capturing online data, but it doesn't really capture offline data. Well, you're wrong. It does. You can easily import offline conversions, like phone calls, for example, directly into Google Analytics with some basic JavaScript to be able to capture the event. But how do you weight the value of a phone call, a form submission, even a white paper download that's given in a previous slide? Very simple. One easy way to do it is to better weight and classify these different goal completions can be done directly in Google Analytics. Simply set up custom goals, enter a value associated with each goal, even import these goals directly into Google AdWords so you can see the impact each of your paid search campaigns is having on acquiring these different goal types. All right, now we have goal tracking set up. We're measuring the impact one channel has on another. We're examining user behaviors on our site with a behavior flow report. We're now weighting different goal types based off of our company's specific needs in Google Analytics. We're, we're pulling in those custom weighted goals in the Google AdWords. So how do we attribute value to each channel along the way? Many companies have upwards of 10 touch points along their path to becoming a coveted paying customer. So the question asks, which touch points should get all the credit? Many advertisers use the last click or last interaction model, which essentially gives 100% of the credit or value to the last channel the customer was on at the time of conversion. This model can be used baseline in which to compare other models. Then on the flip side, we have the first click or first interaction, which assigns all credit to the first campaign that brought in the now customer to the site. This model is often used in PPC and various branding campaigns to help measure acquisition impact and also brand awareness. Next, we have a linear model, which distributes uh, credit equally across touch points. This can be good if you have an elongated sales cycle and a fair amount of retargeting and lead nurturing goes along the way for acquiring this potential customer. This is a position-based model, or some call it the U-shaped attribution model, which can be adjusted but typically assigns a higher percentage of credit to the first and the last interactions. We also have a time decay model which assigns more credit to each touch point the closer to the time of conversion. I personally like to flip this around to do a reverse time decay model, assigning more credit to the touch points that occurred uh, at the beginning part of the conversion process. These are just a few of uh, the different attribution models that you can look at. Uh, all these are actually found directly in Google Analytics. So if you haven't had a chance to pull this data, and look at it in the way of comparing different models, I highly suggest you do. It's really, really cool. Um, depending on the different campaigns you're looking at, you can actually uh, differentiate goal types. You can, you can actually bucket different types of traffic, like paid and organic together, um, looking at display and the, the potential impact a display campaign has if you're looking at a linear model or a time decay model. Oftentimes, remarketing and display ads tend to get weighted a little more heavily than they do with more of the traditional first or last interaction models. Another more custom method that we use is called the W-shaped attribution method. We often pull this type of data, and here's a screenshot of one of the reports that we pull on a weekly basis, uh, to review the differences between, in this instance, it would be first touch and the W-shaped model, which really is about assigning the most credit to the first, the mid, and the last touch point along the conversion process. Now, I get this model's not going to work for every business, but for this particular B2B SaaS company, it makes sense to present the data in this way to be able to analyze the differences between the two. Whatever attribution model you use, do your best to get everybody at your company looking at the same data and using the same reports. Things can get really messy if marketing, finance, and sales are all like, looking at different models. Trust me, I've been there on numerous occasions, and it's a real mess. Okay, so lastly, you're probably asking yourself, Mr. Iyer, how am I going to be able to do all of this? 
I realize there's only so much time in the day. So any way we can automate some of our processes to free up some time to do more of the fun stuff like deep diving and data mining, then let's do it. So this, this tip slide is specifically designed for AdWords. Again, I've been in this space for a long time, and my passion is paid search. So if I've, if I've lost you already, uh, my apologies. But if you're still on the line and you're interested in AdWords and paid search, then we'll have a lot to talk about. Okay, so one way to do this is to create your own bid rules. And you can actually do this directly within AdWords um, uh, and create your own bid management system with custom rules. Some of the things you're able to do is automate your rules based off of uh, time of day, labels, which could be separated by brand search terms and non-brand search terms, um, high click costs and low click costs. However you want to set up your labels, we could do a whole training on, on just proper usage uh, of labels and AdWords. Um, adjust bids by the time of day, taking advantage of some of those custom metrics like uh, revenue, cost per lead, uh, any of those Salesforce metrics that we're able to pull in to, um, to AdWords, you can actually run bid automation based off of those custom rules as well, or those custom metrics. Really, really cool stuff. Um, this is an example of what it actually looks like in the bulk operations section of AdWords. It's, it's really complex. One way that we like to do it is actually have our own MCC or our own product, if you will, uh, to be able to run some of these, these formulas through pulling in sales data from Salesforce and also doing all of our bid optimization and automation is done through kind of a specific product that we have here at Big Leap. But one thing I would say is caution yourself. If you get too automated, um, you don't want to remove yourself too far from the intricacies of PBC management. So one thing that's kind of cool about this is you're able to email notifications to yourself or others if there's errors or any time a certain rule is run. Um, really, you know, be able to uh, you know, have a strong connection to, to what's going on within your AdWords campaigns uh, by the use of, of email. Thank you for your time. Um, hopefully, you know, what I had today made some sense and, and was valuable to at least a few of you. I'd like to turn the time back over to Shema for Q&A. Awesome. <clears throat> Thanks, Tim. It looks like we have a few questions coming in, and we'll try to get through as many of them as we can. Um, first one here is, how are you able to pull Salesforce data, like revenue, leads, et cetera, into AdWords interface? Yeah, that's a great question. So really what you do, and it sounds a lot simpler than it actually is once you get in to start uh, implementing it, but you just generate a piece of uh, custom JavaScript code and put it on all pages of your website. Uh, and what you do with that is be able to capture the unique user ID number. From there, if you have admin access or admin privileges in Salesforce, you go in and create a new column or a new custom column and call it something like dynamic user ID number. From there, you're able to pull in the information from that user ID and match it up directly to the Salesforce record. And then from there, simply assign the different goal types that you have in your own Salesforce campaign and then push it back out to AdWords. And we do this through our NCC as well. Uh, great. All right, here's uh, another one from Sarah. She says that the biggest question they're trying to answer is how to do order attribution between print catalog and online marketing. Um, she said they're having a difficult time merging offline print sources with digital channels, and she's wondering if there's a good way to do that. Yeah, that's a great question. So the offline and the online worlds are definitely... Um, starting to collapse upon each other. There's some really cool attribution programs uh, that are being invented and, and created on a really on a daily basis. Um, it seems like I, I hear of a new one, but uh, Google also uh, invented or actually purchased, invested uh, into an attribution program. Um, but essentially, uh, any way you can attach, kind of going back to the previous webinar, using UTM codes, any way that you can um, to be able to decide or differentiate uh, different users, different visitors coming to your site, you'll be able to put them in those different audience buckets. And from there, it's really easy to differentiate um, the value that each campaign is having. Now, it does get a little bit more challenging when you're talking about offline events. The example that I used with a phone call, 
it's fairly easy because if you're able to put a piece of JavaScript on your website, you can capture the call coming from your website. The challenge is slightly different when you have a print magazine or uh, a piece of, of information that doesn't actually have some sort of controllable uh, you know, back-end tracking system. And from there, um, you know, I would love to talk to you more about some, some different options on how to do it. I think it's a very, very uh, good question, one that's very difficult to answer, I think, for in a lot of instances. But anyway, you can have uh, unique tracking codes and unique pages uh, on a billboard or a on a print magazine. Um, it's really easy to be able to track it from there if you can actually get them or direct them to, to your website. Um, great. All right. Well, you know, I have a question for you. Um, you went into quite a bit of detail about, you know, attribution and the different models there and, you know, how people use those. But what um, kind of tools or strategies do you guys like to use to determine the quality of those leads? Yeah, th there's various different um, lead scoring models out there that you can look into, very similar to the attribution slide that I had. Uh, lead scoring is something that's also very similar, um, depending on your company and organization, how you qualify leads. Uh, I'll give an example of, of when I was at a previous company. We, we did some research in determining that a phone call was 17% more likely to convert into a customer than a form submission. And, and we kind of followed the same pattern all the way down to understanding, well, uh, this particular landing page produces this conversion rate, which allows us to see what the sales to or lead to sales conversion rate was. And it was a big spreadsheet and with a lot of information, but ultimately um, being able to qualify a lead and attach a score to it using those weighted metrics, a lot of it comes down to um, understanding the quality of those leads and understanding the close rates of those leads and even different campaigns like email, uh, paid search, SEO, even direct navigation, uh, understanding the close rates, not only from a leads perspective, but from the lead to a sales side, which is really where pulling in that Salesforce data comes in handy, being able to see of the leads generated in AdWords or even in uh, Google Analytics for that matter, how many of those are closing and what's the average revenue value or average lifetime value of a lead that closes with that particular channel. Uh, okay, great. Um, looks like we have another question from Sam. They're asking, from a publisher's standpoint, what is the best way to track conversions, um, whether it be a sale confirmation, email sign-up, or other action after the initial visit? Yeah, another great question. So again, any, anytime you have a thank you page that has a very specific piece of code assigned to it, you're able to pass in that unique uh, visitor ID number into Salesforce and capture it. From there, you can associate your Salesforce record. And again, this is assuming that you're using Salesforce. I realize there's other CRMs out there. Um, I'm very particular to Salesforce, but there's a lot of others that, that work really well also. Um, we here at Big Leap don't have as much experience pulling that information directly in the AdWords, but so I'll keep using the Salesforce experience, for example, because that's where we have more experience. Um, from there, being able to assign values and actually use, you can, you can use um, offline sources such as print and be able to put that directly into Google Analytics as well. They have some really cool functionality that they've created. If you haven't been into Google AdWords recently, uh, I'm sorry, Google Analytics, they're building out new functionality. It seems like every week they come out with something really, really cool. It's becoming highly customizable. You're able to import. Um, many offline events directly in there, assign values to them like you would any kind of online event. Um, the challenge is just to be able to pull in some sort of digital metric like a UTM code or a thank you page or a unique visitor ID uh, and be able to associate it with Google Analytics and your awesome run. All right. Well, thanks, Tim. Thanks for sharing that. That was a good 40 minutes, and we're getting a lot of responses to it here. People are giving you really positive feedback, so thanks for that, everybody. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add, Tim? No, no, I, I don't think so. Really, I guess just to kind of sum it up, um, you know, if you do have any questions, and I tried to, to go through this as quickly as possible, I think there were numerous sections that really could warrant their own webinar, attribution being one. Uh, Google Analytics could probably be, you know, numerous webinars, but if you ever have any questions or want to talk through stuff, here at Big Leap, we love digital marketing. We love data. We love talking about it. So if you ever have any questions, give us a call. Uh, 
come to our office. We're in Lehigh, if you're local here in Utah. Uh, we'd love to talk to you and see if there's anything we can do to help out your business. All right. Well, you know, watch for that recording from us. We'll send that out in an email today. And, you know, I'd recommend you take Tim and Big Leap up on their offer. And thanks again, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day. And thanks, Tim. Yeah. Thank you.